there on the web today watching Hunters on Amazon Prime. I just watched the first episode tonight, and it was kind of a long episode. It's about an hour and a half long. Um, and I have to say, so far, I'm digging it. It's uh, a new series that's being produced by Jordan Peele, who has uh, made the movies Get Out and Us. Both are fantastic. Um, I've also really enjoyed his uh, Twilight Zone revival so far. I've watched about half of it on uh, CBS All Access so far, and um, I've always been a... Um, Excuse me. I've always been a pretty big fan of CBS's Twilight Zone, and I did really like Jordan Peele's revival. Uh, so far, it's been really good, and I like that he's kind of making different stories uh, for the show instead of just reviving old stories all the time. I mean, yeah, he does kind of play with some of the classic stories, but he kind of approaches them in a different uh, way. Um, so if you haven't watched that on CBS All Access yet, you should definitely check it out. And uh, now he's producing Hunters. And Hunters takes place in 1977, and it's about a group of people during that time in New York City who are going around searching for Nazis who fled to our country after World War II. Um, this, <laughs> it really does kind of feel like the Quentin Tarantino version of this. Um, because, you know, in this na Nazi hunter group, there's a nun who carries around guns, and there's an actor who uh, helps inform, and the group is richly diverse. Um, and, you know, this group kills. <laughs> It's very much a over-the-top, kind of out-of-reality sort of thing. Uh, you know, there were real Nazi hunters in our country during this time, but it wasn't a really flashy group, and they obviously weren't going around just killing people. They were arresting them and putting them to justice and letting the courts take care of the Nazis that way. It wasn't just shooting them up and everything. Um, this show is already causing controversy um, because of historical accuracy, which to me really isn't that surprising because anytime a show like this is made or a movie like this is made, there's always going to be a controversy over accuracy. Even though the show makes it bluntly clear that it is inspired by true events. That's not even the same thing as saying that it's based on a true story. It's inspired by, which means they took inspiration from a real uh, situation or a real piece of history, and they did their own thing with it. That's basically all it means when somebody says that something is inspired by something else. It is not a frame-for-frame frame, um, acting out, you know, it's not a complete redo of history or anything like that. It's something that's inspired by history and they went and did their own thing with it. So yes, a lot of liberties are made um, in this first episode. And I'm sure that's going to be a pretty big theme moving forward in the show. Um, it's got an explosive um, opening. Uh, first of all, I had no idea that Dylan Baker was in this show. Uh, good for the casting directors to pick him because he's an absolutely underrated yet fantastic actor. And if you don't know who Dylan Baker is, just Google the name. You'll probably recognize his face. You, he's one of those guys where you're like, oh, it's that guy. Um, you've definitely seen him in something, whether you realize it or not, or if you remember, recognize the name or not. Uh, he's hosting a barbecue, and it's all nice, and he runs some sort of American business, and he invites a new secretary over, and he brings his wife, and 
the wife is an immigrant from Poland and she starts to recognize him and she starts to get very tense and she's begging everybody to call the police. She's very afraid. She keeps screaming Nazi, Nazi. She starts ta speaking in Polish and before you know it, Dylan Baker's character pulls out a silenced gun and shoots his new secretary and shoots his family and shoots the guests and then finally shoots the girl that's claiming that he's a Nazi because he is a Nazi. Um, it's very well acted. It creates kind of tension out of something very small. Um, it's a really quick scene, but it's very, very effective. Um, we we kind of follow the story through Logan Lerman's character. He plays Jonah Hilderbaum, and he seems like a regular guy living in New York City. Um, he sells drugs to keep a roof over him and his grandma's head. So, I mean, he's not the most moral person in the world, but, you know, he's just another guy making it. He lives with his grandmother, and one night his grandmother is mysteriously killed. And, you know, they are, they're a Jewish family, and he starts trying to do a little investigation of his own to find out why his grandmother was killed, and who killed her. And this eventually leads him to meet an old friend of his mother's named Meyer Offerman, who's played by Al Pacino. And Al Pacino, he, he really proves why he's one of the most influential actors of our time, because he's this little Italian guy, but he proved in Scarface that he can become Cuban, and here he proves that he can become Jewish. He just slips in and out of roles like it's nobody's business, and once again, he's just a whole lot of fun to watch here. Um, he, he's very, very, very good. And, you know, I've always, I've liked Logan Lerman and other stuff. Um, and he's good here, too. Um, I like that the show kind of focuses on his mystery. And as it unfolds, it's, it, it's pretty fun. Um, I think I'm going to like this show moving forward. Um. There's, it looks like it's going to be fun, it looks like it's going to be action-packed, um, it looks like it's going to be cool, and again, I'm not, I'm not planning on getting hung up on history or any of that controversy, it's not being made to step on anybody's toes, it's just kind of providing entertainment, and I, I, I don't mean to keep bringing up Quentin Tarantino, but I wonder what people think of Inglorious Bastards. Because that movie was, it was pretty much a remake of World War II. You know, we're living in a time where remakes is pretty, making a remake is pretty big in Hollywood and in the show business. And Quentin Tarantino, of all people, decided to remake World War II. And it was a fun little movie. And I do wonder what people thought of that, because there's not even a little bit of that that is historically factual. So, you know, don't get hung up on the history of things, or, you know, is this accurate or is this not accurate? I wouldn't really worry about that. Um, it, was a, it was a fun show, um, even though the premiere is an hour and a half, you remained sucked in for the whole hour and a half. Um, it doesn't look like any of the other episodes are quite that long. So, you know, a, a lot of shows do a longer premiere. It's just something that happens. Um, I, I don't find anything wrong with it. Uh, but, I mean, you know, like I said, for, sh it was for an episode that was that long, it, it kept your... Um, kept your attention, it didn't feel like it was slow, um, it was, it was a nice solid premiere. So I'm definitely interested to see how this all plays out. It has definitely set the, set the board, that, that's kind of a, a motif and a theme throughout this first episode is the chessboard. Um, so I'm sure that's going to be a big deal playing into it 
in future episodes. Um, so it's definitely set the board. The pieces are moving, and it'll be interesting to see where this goes from here. So, if you're thinking about watching Hunters on Amazon Prime, I think you should, based on the first episode. Uh, I'm gonna power through these, and we'll see how the rest of the series is. It, I mean, it could fall off and be a pile of shit by the end. We'll just have to wait and see. But it does have a pretty, pretty awesome premiere. So we're going to watch the rest of this, and uh, I'll let you know how the rest of it is. But if it sounds good to you, you should check it out.